it, it, it really is the most, I think, it's, I think it's our best product. I think it's the most unique thing on the road. And finally, the future will look like the future. After a week of Cybertruck deliveries, we observed three types of audiences emerging after the conclusion of this event. First, there are those satisfied with the amount of information Tesla has provided about the pickup truck, enough for them to decide whether or not to purchase it. Second, there are those dissatisfied with what they received after a four-year wait, and for them, ceasing to watch the live stream is the best resolution. Lastly, viewers are left with numerous lingering questions, especially regarding Elon Musk's undisclosed features at the event, primarily related to the floating mode or water-resistant tests. So, why does this feature remain shrouded in secrecy? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already, and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. It's truly surprising that even Ford CEO Jim Farley extended his congratulations to Elon Musk and the Tesla team for successfully rolling out the Cybertruck. This highlights a relatively positive relationship among the leadership of top American automotive companies and possibly indicates Jim's appreciation for the Cybertruck, deeming it quite impressive. However, some argue that it could have been even more perfect if we had witnessed the water-resistant tests and floating mode test at the event. How important is Cybertruck's water resistance? Before delving into the reasons why Tesla did not showcase this feature, let's revisit the remarkable water-resistant capabilities of the Cybertruck, surpassing anything else on the market. Previously, we witnessed the Cybertruck engaging in a spectacular display on the shores of Texas near the Gulf of Mexico. Initially, it seemed like it would drive along the coastline to impress nearby onlookers, but that wasn't the case. The Cybertruck plunged straight into the sea at a relatively high water level, surprising everyone and creating a spectacular splash that had never been seen before. Regarding this ability, Elon Musk once shared that Cybertruck will be waterproof enough to briefly serve as a boat so it can cross rivers, lakes, and even seas that aren't too choppy. He also commented further that it needs to be able to get from Starbase to South Padre Island, which requires crossing the channel. It, does, it, feels, it doesn't feel like, like a normal truck. It's, it's smooth as silk and, and, and silent uh, when, when you drive it. So, will the Cybertruck really float like Musk said? From a basic or more in-depth physics perspective, any truck or vehicle with a sealed undercarriage can float to a certain depth. For example, the currently available Rivian R1T can ford water up to 43.1 inches, and that limit was determined because if the water gets any higher, the truck starts to float. The purchasable Ford F-150 Lightning will probably float as well once it gets in deep enough water. The problem isn't floating, it's staying afloat and controlling your truck boat without a rudder or additional propulsion. Compared to the undercarriage of the Rivian R1T or the F-150, Tesla Cybertruck is no less impressive when we examine its undercarriage. It is designed to be discreet and flatter than ever, aiding in controlling the influx of water into the internal components. In another aspect, the weight of the Cybertruck is disclosed as 6,603 pounds and 6,843 pounds for the two variants, while the Rivian R1T weighs up to 7,148 pounds. These factors together provide substantial evidence for the Cybertruck's floating mode capabilities. So, is Tesla's waterproofing test a big turning point for floating mode? About a week before the delivery event at Giga Texas, images of the Cybertruck being in a water tank were widely circulated on X. And the reason for the test not being showcased at the delivery event was that it directly relates to Cybertruck's floating mode. Specifically, this experiment was conducted to assess water leakage into crucial storage areas such as the front bed and the entire interior cabin. In a meticulous approach, an engineer would directly crawl into the bed and close the tonu cover to monitor any potential leaks. The evaluation levels include light rain, moderate rain, and heavy rain. Moreover, when the Cybertruck enters a water containment facility, it also undergoes the challenge of immersion in water at depths of one meter or one and a half meters for approximately 20 minutes. It seems to have been successful, as there is no information indicating leaks that could have dampened its interior. This is so fun. If the Cybertruck passes this test, based on its resilience to dust and performance in submersion conditions, it could be classified under the IP67 rating, indicating durability against dust and water submersion. 
Many viewers have expressed concern that after being soaked in salt water, will the Cybertruck corrode? The answer is no. But uh, that, that would be, uh, have basically no corrosion, um, that didn't need paint. Usually, other metals, when exposed to seawater, will corrode over time, typically within 9 to 12 months or even sooner if not properly maintained. However, for the body of this pickup made from 30 times stainless steel alloy, concerns about corrosion seem unnecessary. We know that stainless steel has better corrosion resistance compared to most other materials, such as carbon steel, for example. This is because stainless steel contains a certain amount of chromium, usually ranging from 10.5% to 27%. Chromium forms a thin layer on the surface of the stainless steel, preventing oxygen and other corrosive substances from coming into contact with the metal inside. This protective layer is called a passive layer, and it can self-repair if damaged. Through a specific heat treatment, especially cold rolling, the corrosion resistance is further enhanced. The welding seams joining the steel panels are also meticulously fixed to eliminate any gaps, no matter how small. This is the first reason why Cybertruck can perform the ability to wade through water without fear of any factors. Why was Tesla so wise to add this feature to Cybertruck? Cybertruck was officially released with two dual motor variants and Cyber Beast, and both variants use all wheel drive. Incidentally, driving on the beach is very popular and four-wheel drive vehicles are well suited for this type of travel. Accordingly, drivers also need to deflate their tires to prevent their car or truck from digging into the sand. For the floating test, it sets an important requirement that the weight of the vehicle can't be too heavy because it'll sink into the beach. As we mentioned, the weight of this pickup above incorporates a maximum of 2,500 payload, as we are told the highest gross vehicle weight on most beaches for drivers is 10,000 pounds. According to this video posted at Arkansas Beach, the Cybertruck proves to be highly suitable as an ideal vehicle on sand, showcasing no issues when navigating through water with a single driver. The Cybertruck meets the criteria for an ideal beach vehicle, and based on recent videos, the pickup demonstrated no problems during this test. However, concerns have been raised about the Cybertruck's battery system if submerged in deep salt water. There is a worry that water could enter and cause short circuits in the 4680 battery cells. So, can seawater easily be the end of the Cybertruck's 4680 battery packs? This could happen with a pickup truck, but certainly not the Cybertruck. You know Monroe? He once thought that removing Tesla's 4680 battery was simple and boring, but he had a bad result when it took two weeks just to disassemble an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, even when working with a team. It was so complex that he had to say that the enclosing structure was unprecedented. It seemed like it was not from the same manufacturer compared to the previous 2170 battery packs. Disassembling the battery pack is quite slow because it has many layers covering it and is attached to the seat. It seemed like a smooth sailing situation, but then they found themselves in a major predicament. As it turned out, entire battery cells and other crucial components of the system were engulfed by a sturdy pink foam layer. The pink foam is indeed polyurethane adhesive, utilized to secure the battery cells and internal components. Tesla used a substantial amount of adhesive to the point where it not only filled the surface but also completely occupied the internal space of each battery cell bar. Therefore, infiltrating and damaging these battery packs seems practically impossible. Despite 80% of the manufacturer's assembly process being automated by machines, every part is meticulously inspected after leaving the production line. Moreover, the assembly teams at the Texas factory, we dare say, possess the most significant experience among all the Giga factories. This is a primary reason why the Model 2 is brought into production at Giga Texas. The truth is the process of waterproofing each component from the electrical system to the engine for the Cybertruck undergoes several steps, particularly in the power supply system. We understand that besides stainless steel, Tesla reinforces water resistance for all its models in various ways, such as adding a waterproofing layer. Tesla is also particularly meticulous in creating small vents under the Cybertruck to allow water drainage in case it enters but cannot escape. All the requirements to meet the floating mode capability are already in place. So why didn't Tesla announce Cybertruck's floating mode? You know, you never know when the, the apocalypse uh, could come, come along at any moment. And um, at here at Tesla, we have the finest in apocalypse uh, technology. <laughs> After all that Elon Musk mentioned about the special capability of Cybertruck, we became even more curious when a fantastic and highly anticipated feature by many fans doesn't appear on the screen at Giga Texas. What happened to the floating mode? 
We know that the Tesla Cybertruck has demonstrated relatively effective performance when driving in areas with heavy rain. While it hasn't crossed oceans, lakes, or ponds, and there have been no images or videos revealed about this capability, the video of the Cybertruck at Arkansas Beach is a significant step in affirming its water crossing ability, even though it hasn't yet reached a depth where it can float like a boat. We have come up with several hypotheses and reasons why showcasing this feature might not have been appropriate in the recent delivery event, but Elon Musk may provide updates on it in 2024. Many opinions suggest that Tesla didn't disclose this feature because the Cybertruck is a failure from the initial drawing, designs, and features, and making it waterproof was challenging, let alone making it float like a boat. This is a foolish and pessimistic thought. If you haven't seen the scenes of the Model X driving through large rain puddles, it's quite astonishing. It's easy to deduce that from this situation, there's no reason why regular models like the Model X and Model Y can effectively resist water, while a dedicated off-road pickup truck cannot. The Cybertruck surely performs much better, perhaps at a greater water depth, and withstands much more intense waves. The first reason why floating mode is temporarily postponed during Big Event November may be because this mode is not really perfect or reaches the parameters that Tesla wants while the delivery event can't be delayed any further. A full test from preparation to data extraction takes at least eight months to complete. Meanwhile, it was revealed in November that the Cybertruck performed a waterproof test or appeared in the Arkansas Sea to perform floating mode. So this test is 80% certain to be incomplete. On the other hand, in addition to floating mode testing, Tesla will also demonstrate corrosion resistance and many other possibilities. You know, even if stainless steel alloy is absolutely resistant to corrosion, other materials can still rust when exposed to salt water, not to mention the worst case of condensation. Accordingly, the corrosion does not happen immediately after a few days, but after a while, rust begins to appear, usually two months if not well maintained. So if after floating the accessories get rusty, it will definitely create a wave of criticism for Cybertruck and Tesla. So what's the second reason why floating mode does not appear? Another theory is that the Cybertruck cannot float as announced by Elon, at least at present it cannot demonstrate this ability. This is a hypothesis that, in our opinion, is only 20% correct based on many grounds. However, let's talk about why it can't be done at the moment. Even though Cybertruck has the foundation and material characteristics and enveloping design for a vehicle to float on water, it's still missing something. The decisive accessory is that specialized wheel for floating mode, which we have not yet seen appear at the Tesla store. Specialized tires for floating on water have the same effect as propellers, because they create more inflation and are lighter than regular tires. Tires with deep grooves and treads will help disperse water better and minimize the possibility of hydroplaning. When tires can disperse water well, the vehicle will be less susceptible to the force of the water, thereby lifting it out of the water to float. The load capacity of the tires is inversely proportional to the vehicle's buoyancy. This is because, with larger tire load capacities, the water pressure acting on the tires also increases thereby reducing the vehicle's buoyancy. Therefore, at present, Tesla's tires may not meet these requirements, affecting the floating mode to a considerable extent. However, this is just speculation, as we mentioned, and it's only 20% accurate because the Rivian R1T and F-150 Lightning also don't have separate tires, but they seem to be able to perform the floating mode at a shallow level. The Cybertruck also has the advantage of being lighter than the Rivian R1T, so it's more likely capable of floating. So. After the unveiling of a Cybertruck video featuring the floating mode without accompanying specific metrics and clear safety assurances for the pickup truck after the demonstration, a significant backlash in Texas does seem inevitable. It'll be a controversy reminiscent of the 2019 bulletproof test with a steel ball. Tesla's been more cautious in each test, with successful tests like Al Capone and Crash being showcased, and if it fails, we'll have to wait for more information until 2024, 2025, or some undetermined future date. Floating mode is the most prominent example of this cautious approach. Tesla has already sold 1.3 million vehicles globally since the beginning of the year, with its target of reaching 1.8 million as set by the company. Tesla has introduced several discount programs and other initiatives to boost delivery numbers as we are currently in the last month of 2023. Furthermore, with approximately 1 to 2 million people awaiting their Cybertrucks, it might take one or two years before they actually receive their vehicles. Many may have expected to have a Cybertruck in their garage or they're in their driveway sooner and might have lined up to purchase or lease one earlier with the introduction of the all-electric pickup truck this year. 
With the delivery timeline pushed to 2024 and 2025, Tesla hopes to keep customers engaged with this discount, which is also expected to contribute to higher delivery numbers, aiming to achieve the target of 1.8 million vehicles in 20. So, how do you feel about the waterproof ability of this pickup? And what do you expect about floating mode in the near future? We appreciate your thoughts. We hope you will have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.